Batman and Robin take in a new partner. Introducing Batgirl. Batman has a long history of adding new members to his crime-fighting family. In Detective Comics number 38 in 1940, Bob Kane, Bill Finger, and Jerry Robinson introduced his first sidekick, Robin the Boy Wonder. Ever since, he seems to have a revolving door in the Batcave. We've seen Robins come and go, but the Bat family kept ever expanding outward. In 1966, while the Batman TV show was airing on ABC, producer William Dozier asked DC to create a female hero that he could then put on the show. They obliged, and DC debuted the character of Batgirl in issue 359 of Detective Comics. Dozier was delighted and added the character to the show in the third season. She would be played by Yvonne Craig in the campy series and become a regular feature of DC Comics. While Batman seems to change with the seasons, there have only ever been three live-action Batgirls. As previously mentioned, Yvonne Craig played her on the 60s TV show, Alicia Silverstone played her in the famously bad Batman and Robin, you're about to become compost. And now Leslie Grace has played her in a film that seemingly no one will ever see. What happened to this film? Let's find out on what the f*** happened to this unmade movie. While DC had ruled the superhero box office in the 70s and 80s with their characters, Marvel has pretty much left everyone in the dust since 2008's Iron Man. DC tried to get in on the action with a Superman film and the Justice League, but it didn't connect with audience in the same way. They seemed to find their footing by throwing the idea of a cinematic universe out of the window and focusing on solo films unrelated to each other. Their Batman-centric films, Joker and The Batman, connected with critics and fans alike. The DCEU still pushed along, but fans didn't seem happy with the Warner Brothers output. New projects began popping up with some of the smaller characters, with Titans and Doom Patrol gaining steam on streaming services, while the CW had the Arrowverse stable of shows. After his success on the first two Avengers films, director Joss Whedon seemed to be jumping ship. DC approached him about possibly doing a Batgirl film. Whedon had long been known for his penchant for kick-ass female heroes like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, and Firefly. He seemed like an obvious fit. During this time, he stepped in for Zack Snyder, who had to depart his Justice League movie after a family tragedy. Whedon left the Batgirl project, saying he couldn't crack the story. Whedon told Variety, The story kind of just crumbled in my hands. There were elements that I just hadn't mastered that, after a long time, felt like I wasn't going to. I told people that I didn't have an idea, which isn't an exact truth. I had an idea, but it didn't fit in the space that was left for it. It was a little heartbreaking. Even if Whedon had stayed on, it's hard to tell if the project had continued after allegations of his behavior on the set of Justice League. Christina Hodson was brought in to write a new script in April 2018. This version of the film would use a young Barbara Gordon starting out as Batgirl in a Gotham that already had an established Batman. Directors Adil L. Arby and Bilal Falah were brought on board in May 2021 after it was confirmed that the film would be released on HBO Max as an original film. Leslie Grace was quickly cast as the titular hero in July of that year. From there, the film went into production from November 2021 to March 2022. Unlike most of the films on this show, this one actually got made. Some interesting decisions about the cast of the film had leaked, as Sylvester Stallone had been in negotiations to play the main villain of the piece Firefly. They couldn't come to a deal, so the role was offered to Brendan Fraser, who accepted. He already had DC credit, as he was currently playing Robot Man on DC's quirky superhero show Doom Patrol on HBO Max. Seems like a perfect fit. In order to raise excitement, the directors confirmed that Batman would appear in the film. Many fans began speculating on which version of Batman we were going to get. Ben Affleck had suggested that his days as the Cape Crusader were over. After the critical drubbing that his other appearances had taken, he seemed to want to move on from the role. It had also been announced that Michael Keaton was returning as the Batman in the upcoming multiverse-hopping Flash film. Could we be getting two films with Keaton back in the Batsuit? 
By December, it was revealed that Keaton would be back in the cowl, this time acting as more of a mentor to the young Batgirl. Batgirl was supposed to release after the Flash film, and rumors have been that it would act as a reboot of the DCEU. Warner Brothers could now pick and choose what they wanted to keep from the films that they had already done, and redo what they wanted to get rid of. Batgirl would then act as a guide to what the new landscape of the DC films would look like. Flash ended up getting pushed back to 2023 due to the very public problems Ezra Miller has been facing. With everything seemingly moving forward, the production team began post-production. The film was being edited and the special effects were moving along. As with any film, some test screenings were held. Every film goes through this process to help shape what the film will ultimately be. Reports are that the film scored a 60 out of 100, not a score you hope for in one of these screenings. The team moved forward and began to fix the problem seen in the film, but had high hopes that everything would work out for the best. As all this was happening, Warner Brothers was being broken off from its parent company, AT&T. The WB and Discovery were spun off into their own company, and David Zaslav was now in charge of Warner Brothers. He began slashing as much money as possible on numerous projects. Reports were that he sought to cut $3 billion out of their spending. In August 2022, DC Films and Warner Brothers slash Discovery announced that even though the film was almost through with post-production, it was being shelved indefinitely. It had been a victim of the company's cost cutting, even after they had already spent $90 million on the film. They stated that their goal was to move DC properties away from the HBO Max streaming service and focus on theatrical releases. The rap stated that Warner Brothers and Discovery felt the film didn't work. Their goal is to make DC films cinematic events like Marvel films, and this film simply didn't fit that category. Reports by those in attendance at some of the audience screenings had leaked as to what the film was about and the overall quality of the film. Collider's sources said the film looked cheap compared to other DC films. On an episode of The Town podcast, Matt Baloney laid out what the plot for the film would have been. It was said the stakes were small. As seen in Justice League, superheroes are trying to save the world. Here the story just centered on Batgirl taking on Firefly. He wants to burn down Gotham after his veteran benefits are cancelled. While on paper this may not seem that exciting, just remember that in The Batman, the Riddler plans on flooding Gotham City. The stakes seem about equal, and that film was highly regarded. Firefly looks to have caused the death of Barbara's mother, and she is seeking revenge. Some reports are that it played more like a CW movie or a pilot for an Arrowverse TV series. Interestingly, reports have come out that any of the bad audience reviews from the test screenings don't seem to hold much merit. While a 60 out of 100 is not a great review, it is being reported that the upcoming films in the DC lineup, Black Adam and Shazam! Fury of the Gods, both received a 60 out of 100 in their first test screenings. Fans have been left with no answers as to why the other two are being pushed as highly as they are, but Batgirl was cancelled. Many have wondered if they cancelled the right project when you also factor in how much of a PR nightmare The Flash has become with Ezra Miller's antics. Variety denied that the film's quality played into the decision to shelve the film and that it was purely financial. They concluded that the most financially sound decision for the film was to write it off as a tax break. This would recoup some money lost to the film already. They could use a purchase accounting maneuver related to the Warner Media slash Disney merger that had to be invoked by mid-August. They had to permanently shelve the film so as to not gain any revenue from it. This has been done in the past. Charlie Chaplin trashed every copy of a film called A Woman of the Sea in order to write it off as a business loss on his company's taxes. He didn't like how the film turned out, so he burned every copy in front of multiple witnesses. For them to keep the write-off, the film can never be released. The cast and crew only learned of the cancellation when the New York Post broke the story on August 2nd. Directors El Arbi and Fala were in Morocco for El Arbi's wedding. When they learned of the film being shelved, Adil El Arbi and Bilal Fala attempted to log into the secure server housing the footage to capture some of it for themselves to keep. They couldn't find it anywhere, and it appeared to have been deleted to keep the film from leaking. 
Warner Brothers did schedule what some are calling funeral screenings for the cast and crew on the Warner Brothers lot before the film was put away for good. Unless the film is someday smuggled out of the Warner Brothers vault, we may never see it. There's always hope, as it was thought that the Roger Corman-produced Fantastic Four movie had been completely destroyed before it was ever shown, and that film became a staple in bootleg form at comic conventions everywhere. Hopefully, we'll still see Michael Keaton don the cape and cowl one more time. But for now, it seems it won't be with a Batgirl at his side. How this affects the DCEU as a whole? Only time will tell. The Flash seems to be a problem every other day, but then new reports are coming out that Henry Cavill and Ben Affleck are returning to their roles of Superman and Batman for future movies. Besides Batgirl, other DC properties have been nixed, with a Strange Adventures series for HBO Max killed altogether. For Warner Brothers Discovery, it looks like DC is going to be a theatrical-only company for the future, whereas Marvel sees the use of all of its platforms for their storytelling. Hopefully, Batgirl will be part of their plans going forward. But for now, we'll have to wait. And waiting is the hardest part.